Phew. Hi guys, we're gonna have some fun tonight. It's uh, nearly half past 10. This is gonna be an absolute logistical nightmare. I don't know why I'm even attempting it, but uh, we're gonna do a tech talk on tail shapes. And <laughs> I've got out the best representations I can for you of the, what I'm gonna call the three, the three basic types. And I'm gonna go through the advantages and disadvantages and tell you why it's important and then I'm going to tell you why it's not important and it's all a load of uh, uh, subjective subjective matter. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to tell you about the basic type, so I'm going to break it down into three and then I'm going to show you variances and how each different type could still do a similar job depending on how the tail shape relates to the tail shape profile kind of I guess. So what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to tell you how the three main tail shapes perform their advantages and the disadvantages and then show you some spin-offs of those and also explain how if you take any one of those shapes and make the tail narrow enough or fat enough you'll still get a, de a pretty desired result yeah so basically within the three categories depending on how tight or wide your tail is it can do a completely different thing anyway so I'll try and make this pretty subjective and I'll try and make it tech on the first three and then I'll show you how the variances can really make it very subjective. Okay, sweet. Enjoy. Follow me. <laughs> so, hopefully you can still hear me all right. So going for a wander around my, around my lounge, you can see the usual famous curtains there. So we're going to break down into three, as we say. So the first tail shape is the pintail. So that's the pintail here. So as you can see, this is the tightest one I've got now on a proper step up. They're probably even tighter than this, but this is, a, this is the best example I can find of everything. So tail shape, pintail, you can see it's rounded, but it comes to quite a sharp point. So the purpose of the pintail is the rail line, as you can see, just carries on all the way around. So you've got a full complete rail line. The rail adheres to the water all the way around. There's no break points, there's no release points, and the tail is relatively narrow. Whoop, 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 this actually looks quite good. So uh, as you can imagine, that would sink down into the water quite deep, and it would give you lots of grip and lots of hold. And the negative of that is going to be that it's not going to be as easy to snap and release, okay? So that's the pintail. That's what you might see on guns. Now I'll say the caveat to this is that could actually be a swallow tail and still be a gun, but we don't. I won't. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't try and sidetrack you straight away. But basically, yep. So pintail, that's there for your step ups. The positive is the grip and the hold. The negative is going to be it's not going to break free and it's not going to turn as easily and it's not going to create as much lift and speed because it's really going to dig into the, dig into the wave. And obviously, as we know, depending on the concaves and the rest of it. It could uh, dig into the waves more or create more lift depending on what the concaves are doing. So they, they all relate as well and the tail width. Okay, so bada bug bum boom. This is what I would call a rounded pintail or a, a thumb tail. Uh, so it's not quite as sharp as a pintail. Some of them you might see even even get even wider around this tip area here. So you might actually see some that are even that are even bigger round. So this is this is just a this is a rounded, a round tail or a rounded pin basically. And uh, this will give you a bit more lift, a bit more lift and speed because it's got that extra width and it will sink into the water a bit less, but it's still gonna hold on to, still gonna hold on to the water all the way around this curve. So it's still gonna adhere to the curve. So it's basically, uh, it's basically a mellowing out of this extreme. So you get from this, and then this gives you still a very grippy board with good hold that you can start to actually maneuver a bit better, but it's still not got those release points, okay? So that's tail shape number one as far as I'm concerned. Tail shape number two is the squash tail. Now this is actually a little bit of a rounded squash. So basically what you would get is, uh, this kind of started originally probably with the square tail. So I don't know if anyone's seen the dumpster diver on the dumpster diver, you'd see, uh, is it the dumpster diver? No, the neck beard, sorry. If you see the neck beard, the neck beard would be slap bang square and slap bang square. So this is a, this is the best example I've got, but it's not really even a squash tail. This is almost like a rounded squash tail. So as you can see from this. So a square tail would be like completely square, edge to edge. And the difference that would give is you've got this wider tail block in the back here, which is gonna create you more lift. 
and there's these break points. So imagine if this was dead square, there'd be these very sharp break points at each corner. And that actually allows you to turn off those. So you, instead of this a rounded shape that's coming right out here and gripping all the way, your, your actual turn and release point when you pivot is actually gonna be here in this corner. So this is probably not the ideal example, but most people have seen a standard squash tail, which is what most of the pros ride most of the time. If you don't see them with a round tail or a pin tail, they're basically riding a squash tail. So the only difference on the squash tail is this, this line would be probably a little bit straighter, but not very much to be fair. So this is basically a pretty, pretty reasonable example of a squash tail. So again, what they give you is they, they keep this tail block at the very back, they call this the tail block. Uh, so you've got your normal tail width, which would be a, uh, one foot up from the, from the back end, or I think it's about, yeah, I think it's about 20, I can't remember, it's about 30, 30 odd millimeters. Uh, sorry, 30, 30 odd centimeters, so 300 and something millimeters. But anyway, that's irrelevant. So uh, yeah, the squash is gonna give you some lift and it's going to give you some speed it's going to have less hold but that's going to give you a lot of pivot and a lot of maneuverability so it's kind of like the all-rounder of tails and this is why uh this is why most of the pros have been riding these for so many years because they they have the they have the ability to go everywhere on the wave and create some speed and drive uh yeah so okay so that's number two number three is the swallow tail so we've got two examples of a swallow tail there very different so we've got the old school retro fish tail there so that's your very deep swallow so again this tail block the pins from point to point so this is again this is quite different because obviously on like these retro styles you're uh you're almost creating two pin tails so what you end up doing there is you haven't got you haven't got quite the surface area and lift that you would have from a squash tail Obviously, a lot of these old school fishes, the tail's just wider anyway, so you're going to get a lot of speed out of that lift. But what, what happens is each individual pin with all this release in here can actually sink down into the water quite deep on its own. Now, with that being two pins and the pins being out on the rail, the uh, the downside of that can be that the that the it can it can track a bit and be harder to put rail to rail because if you look at where these where these points are it's a bit like the squash tail but you've got all this area out of it so you sort of you're basically digging from a pin to a pin as opposed to a shape that's all where all of its surface area is in the middle you've got this you've got this shape where you put all the surface area on the outside so that can be why some of the old school fish can be tracky now another example of a swallowtail is what you would see on this, this is my rocket wide. Now this is a, this is a swallowtail, but I mean, it's not much of a swallowtail. It's just like a little nip taken out of there. And quite often the rail shape will be a little bit different on a swallowtail too. So if this was a squash or a square, not only would it go straight across there, I would suspect you'd see more curve in that rear rail line as well. So, you know, this is just like a mini squash. So it's like, it's almost like a squash with a bit of area cut out of them. So I personally quite like these, some of these types of swallow tails. It's sort of hard to explain what the, uh, what the real difference is between that and a squash. But I think you get a, I think you get a bit of a different feel. You get a, it's a little bit less slippery. You get a little bit of grip, but it just, uh, it turns like a, you know, a very modernized version of a fish tail. But to be honest, you know, yeah. So the big, the big differences are when you get to the real retro on the swallow tail. So, so yeah, that's the three main tail shapes and that's what they do for you. Uh, now the big caveat to this is, uh, your swallow tail. So now you go from, you go from a swallow tail like this and think about the disadvantages it has. And then you look at a swallow tail like this. And then if you think of a swallow tail that was actually pulled into here, and the swallow's tiny. Now that would perform the same function as this step up here. It would give lots of bite and hold. So you could basically turn a, you could turn what's supposed to be a swallow tail and have all of its swallow tail disadvantages into a gun. And they do use them on guns and they give huge grip in the waves and you get a straight light rail line and you get a, and you get a really bitey tail because you've taken the, taken that piece out of it. And, uh, you know, if you take if you take this squash tail here and you make it still a 
squarish tail block, but your tail block's only that big, and you narrow the whole width of the tail down by three inches, well, that's going to grip in a big wave as well. And then uh, if we go over to some of these hybrids, well, well, that's a, you know, this is my lost beanbag. Well, that's a, that's a rounded tail. There's nothing about this board that's designed to grip in a big wave. It's just a big fatty and it's like, and it's awesome, but it's a, it gives a smooth, big disc shape. Uh, and then we've got the board that I've just bought from the local guy, Jay at Sedana. Now this is a, this is a diamond tail. So this is where we get into, so that's the, that's the confusion of, uh, that's the, science of the three different tail shapes pure and the confusion of how they can still perform completely different tasks depending on the, on the tail shape and then now we're getting into variances that you add in features to those three basics to get something different so this is a diamond tail so this is very similar to the puddle jump for hp back there of uh, having its kind of squash tail but what this is doing is a diamond tail is actually basically a square or a squash tail and this this angle on the diamond has essentially shortened this rail line by about an inch so where you're the whole the whole length of the rail has essentially it would be there on a squash tail it's here on this board so you've actually shortened up your turning point so you've shortened your rail line and made a board that's going to turn even easier off the tail because you've, you've kind of shortened it up. But then if you take this and you take this point here way back up there and narrow the tail in a bit more again, you could almost use that for a slightly bigger wave. So yeah, don't, so this is, this is kind of the confusion of it and where I think people probably get a, a bit too wrapped up on tail shapes. But you know, the, the basic principles are of your if you're riding a pintail gun, you, you know exactly what you've got it there for, and there's not a variance on that. You've you've got it because you want a a very grippy a very grippy board. So and then if you're riding a squash tail, you know if you're riding these squash tails, you want a loose and slippery board that generates a lot of speed. And uh, you know if you're riding that kind of swallowtail, well, it's it's a retro fish. Like <laughs> you want a swallowtail like. What else are you going to have on a retro? It's not going to be a retro fish if it doesn't have a big swallowtail. Okay, so then we get into some other different variances where we've got uh, steps and wings and flutes and oh, double step down, bat tail, swallow, triple channel, quadruple, inside, double quad concaves, tomos, all that kind of stuff. So this can just get loopy loopy really. So this is, this is, a, this is like a rounded pin but it's got two step downs in it in the rail, a bit like a lot of the lost boards you see. So what you're essentially doing is you're taking, you're taking advantages of some of the back ends, got some of the grip of a rounded pin. You've moved your wide point further up here, which is gonna give you a bit more drive again. But by taking these two step down chunks, you've actually created a break point for the water to break off there. So the water's not gonna adhere quite the same as it would to the just the solid rounded pin shape. Uh, so, you know, they do all these other things to negate some of the some of the negatives of, you know, again, if you compare like this tail, which is on my slot car, that is aimed to put a bit more area further up, give these break and release points than something nice and smooth like uh, this is my uh, quiver killer. So this is more of a smooth and it's going to adhere to the water all the way around, which is going to give you great grip in a bigger wave. And actually, sometimes, personally, I quite like a smooth shape because sometimes all these notches and wings and stuff are actually, uh, they really rely on you. They can really rely on your feet being in the right place over the back fins or they can be quite hard to work with. So they're not always, they're not always super advantageous. So quickly back over, we've got the three main tail shapes. You've got your you've got your pintail, so that's to sit in the water deep, it's nice and narrow. The water adheres to the rail all the way around, and that gives you a great stable, grippy tail in big waves. Uh, the rounded pin takes a very similar shape but makes it a little bit wider, gives it a bit more rounding, and makes it a bit of more of an all-round shape, so it will it will turn a little bit easier and it'll roll rail to rail a little bit easier, but it's still gonna carry a lot of that hold and grip because water's adhering to this curve all the way around. Squash tail, we've got a wide tail block, a mid to wide tail, and we've got these points that we can actually pivot off. So going rail to rail, 
and having this speed and squirt and and that flat bit on the back will let it slide a little bit that's what gives people the more futuristic and performance turning now i don't find some of these types of swallows to be a million miles away they've just got probably a bit more straightness in the rail so they're not quite as curvy in the rail and obviously the tail shape's slightly different so they've just taken a bit of area off the back so they'll kind of like they'll kind of end up being not that dissimilar to that but like a very high performance version of that okay so this is again this is the original swallowtail retro style lots of distance between these pins deep swallow but you end up basically getting two pins so these will actually grip individually quite well on each rail that's why fish actually have quite a range to them which people don't necessarily understand you know you get if you get this thing on one rail and you and you sat on that and you're only on one rail you're actually really on a on half a pintail at one side so you know depending on how you tune these things they can do a different job and then as i say we get into variations of the tail shape like this diamond which is taking elements of a squash but shortening the rail line and then we've got things like you know super wide version of a rounded pin which just creates a really round really elliptical shape all the way up and you basically got a big disc and this is a small waveboard and then we get into these uh these step downs in the tail which again we're trying to create a where your front foot's creating all the drive you're wider than you would be on the same board of a of a different tail shape because if you imagine the the zero is probably this and then the minus one is probably this and the plus one is probably this if you if you think about where the what the tail shape is trying to be so what you've got is this is kind of like an additional an additional extra point down the late part of the board to give you a bit more width around where those fins are and then this fir this first step is probably going back to where the tail shape would be if it didn't have any of these wings on it and then this back part of the tail shape is probably like a minus one where it's actually a bit tighter than it ever would have been so you know imagine if these if this curve went all the way up and cut that off and it came all the way back and added that on it looked virtually the same as my quiver killer and it'd be a smoother shape but these these brake lines and steps reduce surface surface area towards the back and create brake points for the water. So it's like concaves and everything else. People are trying to take the basic stuff and then make slight tunes to those to uh, get what they want to get. So that's me. That's my lounge. That's very full. Uh, we're about half ten at night, and uh, yeah, I just had this in my head, so I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd put it on, do it, and. Uh, Hopefully you like that because that goes nicely in with the concaves. Maybe another night we'll do a little quick bit on rocker. And uh, thank you very much for all your support. And yeah, I hope this one goes down all right. Sorry it's all, you know, the video is not going to be smooth or anything because it's just uh, I'm holding my phone up to myself and holding it down to the board. So it's probably going to look a bit jerky. But uh, all right, cool, guys. Thank you very much. Hope you like the tech. Let me know if you like the uh, tech videos, if you hate them and you think it's a load of nonsense there. Uh, just tell me. <laughs> cool. See you soon.